Welcome to Make It Last, helping you keep your legal ducks in a row and your nest egg secure with your host, Victor Medina, an estate planning and elder law attorney and certified financial planner. Everybody, welcome back to Make It Last. It is Saturday morning if you are listening live, and I've got my cup of coffee. I hope you have a cup of your coffee, and uh, I don't know what to tell you, but I am excited for this show. Lots of really great stuff going on. Now, if you're just tuning into us, it is Make It Last. We help keep your legal ducks in a row and your financial nest egg secure, and um, I just want to kind of take some time this morning to acknowledge some great stuff that's happening in my personal life. I had uh, my oldest son graduate from seventh grade, did really well. I had my middle son make his uh, premier soccer team, and he's uh, moving on in that. He's doing well, also doing well in fourth grade in the STEM program. And my four-year-old seems to like to try to take over the world because he's 14 and he's the last kid. And so he's got to make his voice be heard. Anyway, lots of great stuff, lots of great stuff, including I celebrated a birthday and uh, I had the most unexpected happy birthday present that I could ever wish for. My mom, who happens to live in New York City, and when she's there at that home, she enters the lotto where they give away tickets to see the the show Hamilton. And they do that uh, the first two rows. They give them away for 10 bucks. It's incredible. Well, she wins the lotto. And she calls me and she says, you know, I, I know that Lucas, your middle son, he's, uh, well, she doesn't say your middle son. She's, she said Lucas, but you don't know who Lucas is. So I'm telling you, my middle son, Lucas. Anyway, he calls and, and says, I know Lucas loves Hamilton. He's like the biggest fan. I won these lotto tickets. Do you think he wants to go see the show? And I said, of course he wants to go see the show. I'll pick him up from school. I'll drive up. You can, you can take him to the show. I'll have a drink. I'll read my iPad and I'll take him home when it's done. So as we're driving up, my uh, my mom calls us and said, you know, are you on your way? I said, yeah, I'm on my way. She said, you know, I I, I want Lucas to see the show. He says, but I, I'd actually really prefer if he sees the show with you because I know that you are the number two Hamilton fan in our family. And so I got a chance to go see that show with my son. We got to enjoy it. Let me tell you, it is a fantastic show. It is everything that people tell you that it is. You have got to uh, watch the PBS documentary, see more about it. There are clips online. It was fantastic. A once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm so grateful to have that. So a big public thanks to my mom, who's probably listening to the show uh, and um, for being so generous. Uh, My mom and dad were giving up their chance to see the show so that we could see it. It great. It was great. So that was the best birthday present. Anyway, let's get back to stuff that you want to listen to, which is about retirement planning and getting your legal ducks in a row and protecting your financial nest egg. And guess what? We ended up getting a new law passed uh, and it went into effect on June 9th. It is the Department of Labor fiduciary rule. And, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. In fact, I think on one of the first or second shows that we've done for make it last, we talked about the DOA, DOL fiduciary rule. And we talked a little bit about why it was important for investors and what it really meant. And now we hear, here we are in June 9th, and notwithstanding all of the uh, kind of discussion that was going on since the changeover in the, in the administration, uh, in fact, here we go. We've got the DOL fiduciary rule. Now, I want to do uh, first a review of what it is. And then in the next segment, I want to tell you whether or not it helps you and what you can do uh, with it. But the DOL fiduciary rule came into effect in large part because the Obama administration wanted a way to kind of help protect investors and was looking a way of car- curbing the amount of bad things that happen with investment advice, uh, specifically when people try to line their own pocket, when investment advisors line their own pocket instead of helping their clients. And, you know, it's really difficult to pass new laws. You need the support of Congress, which Obama didn't have. Uh, You need to be able to kind of walk the tightrope of banking and SEC regulations. And so the best way for them to make this change happen was to set a new um, kind of group of rules or what they call promulgating regulations. And they do that in the Department of Labor area because they could propose the regulations and they would be adopted and they didn't need um, the same kind of congressional approval that would be there uh, if you if you try to pass a new law. And so what they did is they said, you know, retirement accounts, those the, that's where we have the most amount of our uh, wealth for the common investor. And so if if we can control what happens in retirement accounts under the Department of Labor, then maybe we can help control what kind of abuses happen. And so what they did is they took their opportunity to uh, be able to change these regulations 
And they put these rules in place that say that if somebody's going to help you with your retirement account, then they have to look out for your best interests. And so in the next segment, I'm going to talk to you about what they actually have to do. But as we start to wrap up this segment, I want to let you know that these rules are just for your retirement accounts. So if you have saved money in in an after tax account, like you had, you got paid, and then you didn't you didn't spend all the money, and you had some savings, and then you say, okay, I'm going to walk over to Vanguard, or I'm going to go to Merrill Lynch, or I'm going to go to one of these big players, and I'm going to give them the money to invest. And you kind of walk in and, and work with an advisor. If you're talking about an after tax account, that is not controlled by the new fiduciary rule. Anyone that's giving you advice in that area, they don't have to look out for your best interest. You know, and I know that this is eye-opening because most people believe that if someone is giving them advice and if it's their business and they take them on as a client, they take them out to dinner and they're super nice to them and they sound like they know what they're talking about, well, of course they need to be looking out for their best interest. And then it's eye-opening when you discover that, in fact, they don't have to do that. They can give you advice for something that is suitable, good enough, but isn't in your best interest, especially if that advice of what you buy and what you purchase and what you invest in, if that works out to their interest a little bit more than something that would be like in your best interest, it's okay to do. And it has been for a while. So this new rule is not going to be something that allows you to take your, you know, to stop minding the shop. You should absolutely be looking out for what you need to be doing and and uh, and whether or not the advice is in your best interest. Like you need, you need to be vigilant about that. But it will help you deal with your retirement account. And uh, we're going to cover in the next segment when we come back how it actually is going to handle that. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this show. It is a super important topic. And for me, it is a topic that I'm passionate about because, as you all know, I wear kind of two hats in my professional life. When I'm not on the radio here with you, I deal with people as a lawyer, and then I deal with them as an investment advisor, and often the clients are clients of both of those companies, right? So as a lawyer for 15 years, all I've ever done is put my client's best interests at the forefront of every decision that I'm making, every decision. And so when you spend your career doing that, you can't imagine that anybody would do anything different. When I take on a relationship with a client, it is a sacred relationship where I have to put their best interests, not only at the forefront of every piece of advice, but even at, uh, above my own interests. That's what it is to be committed. And that's what people expect when they work with their lawyer. They want their lawyer to be in their corner, helping them, be looking out for their stuff. And they want that also to be the case on the investment side. And until recently, there hasn't been any rule that requires that at all, especially with the most well-known uh, hometown names when it comes to that stuff. Anyway, we're, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I'm going to talk in more detail about the DOL fiduciary wheel. Stay tuned, and you'll be able to learn what you need to know to help you protect your retirement assets when we come back. Hi, folks. It's Bert. You know, there are more than 500 different ways to claim your Social Security benefits. On June 27th at 6 p.m., Victor Medina is holding a workshop where you'll learn about many of the strategies you can use to help maximize your Social Security benefits. Victor Medina, host of the Make It Last radio show, is a certified financial planner and highly knowledgeable in Social Security matters and will guide you through the potential pitfalls and windfalls of Social Security. This is strictly an educational workshop. No products will be promoted. Topics covered will include how to decide when you should apply for benefits, should it be now or later, strategies to help maximize your Social Security benefits, and the three biggest mistakes people make with Social Security. Victor Medina will be hosting this educational workshop where you'll be able to ask him questions about your Social Security options. In addition, every attendee will get a free copy of his retirement planning book, Make It Last, ensuring your nest egg is around as long as you are. The workshop will be held on June 27th at 6 p.m. at the Conference Center at Mercy. Community College in Princeton Junction. For more information, go to makeitlastradio.com slash social security. Space is limited, so visit makeitlastradio.com slash social security now to reserve your spot. 
Everybody, welcome back to Make It Last. Listen, I just left the last segment talking to you about the new fiduciary rule, but I didn't tell you what it covered and what the obligations were, how it's supposed to work, and so I'm going to do that in this next segment. Now, we were talking about that the uh, the new law has to cover your retirement account because that's the way they were able to pass that law to make it effective. And in this case, uh, it really is going to govern a few things that are related to your retirement, specifically your 401ks and your IRAs. Now, If you have a company-sponsored 401k, that's something that your company has put together that you contribute to, and maybe that they contribute some money to do some matching, that account is really well protected and usually has all kinds of creditor protection around that. Usually those assets are completely immune from creditors. So if somebody that you're going to meet with is going to give you advice to move that account to roll it over to an IRA, they have to be doing that in your best interest. Now, what does that really mean? Well, they're going to have to demonstrate a few things that are better for you by moving that money than by keeping it. For instance, they're going to have to talk a little bit about uh, the fees that are involved. You know, are you going to be paying higher fees with the investments that they're recommending? Or are you going to pay lower fees? Um, they're going to talk a little bit about your uh, protections. You know, do you, is it, is it okay for you to give up unlimited creditor protection and instead just get protection around uh, bankruptcies or should you stay in the 401k and keep that protection? What would be in your best interest given your particular circumstances? They're going to have to talk to you about investment options. Are your investment options in the IRA that they're going to put you in better, broader, or are they more narrow? Now, a lot of that has to do with the kind of investment advisor that they are. Now, for instance, the way that we do our work, we are an independent, which means that we don't sell any proprietary products. We don't recommend something that pays us a higher commission. In fact, uh, when we recommend investments, they are non-commissionable security. So the the people that we we say, okay, go invest in these mutual funds, they don't pay us anything. Uh, They don't give us any trips. Now, that's the right way to do business, but that's not the way that everybody does business. And so when you look at the investment options that are available, many times, many times, the people that are working for those household names, well, they have a limited number of investments that they can offer, that there is a a portfolio, a plate of investments that are part of their recommended stuff. And they can't go outside of that. Why? Because they're employees of these household names. And so for them to keep their job, they have to recommend what the boss says that they have to recommend and maybe not what's in your best interest. So for us, it's a pretty easy barrier to overcome. When we talk to people that are rolling over 401ks in most every circumstance, we're looking at lower funds, uh, lower fees because their investment portfolios are amongst the least expensive that are available out there. If you look at the investment options, well, they're the broadest available. Why? I don't have any limitations at all. I can in, I can invest in whatever my client wants to invest in, and uh, I can recommend anything and everything that's in their best interest. So these 401k rollovers, they need to pass this higher test of making sure that moving that money out is the best thing for you to do. Now, this is particularly the case uh, if the person who's going to be investing this money gets paid more or something different than a level amount. Now, what does it really mean? When you work with a, an RIA, like we're set up to do, you pay a uh, a fee that is a percentage of the assets under management. And so that is what we call a level fee. So whatever that percentage is, we apply that towards your account. That's what you pay us. And that works out pretty well because it keeps us independent since nobody else pays us. You pay us. So when you're doing that, you know that you're getting the advice that's in your best interest because no one else is paying us but you. So the only person that we're loyal, need to be loyal to is you. We don't have to answer to anybody else that isn't you. Okay. So that makes sense. But if someone pays something that is in the form of a commission, like on an insurance product, specifically on an annuity, or if they're selling you a fund and they're getting a commission for doing that. That's not a level fee arrangement. And so when it's not a level fee arrangement, it means that the investments that you're in, they have to be, uh, the compensation has to be reasonable. The recommendations has to be prudent. So they can't sell you something that pays an 11% commission, which by the way, some of these products do. I know it's shocking to imagine that, but you, what what do you think is tied up in that money that you've invested in order for them to pay the investment advisor, the insurance agent, 11% of commission is a real crappy product. 
So you have to make sure that the compensation that someone's being paid, if they're not level, if they're making a commission, has to be reasonable and the investment advice has to be prudent. And so that actually falls out of the main heart of the rule. It has to go under an exemption. And these exemptions are uh, carefully carved out so that what you're uh, being recommended um, still is somewhat protected. But folks, let me tell you, at the end of the day, for the advisor to overcome that, it's paperwork. They have you sign all of these disclosures. And so the question that I would put in front of you is, you know, you're in the midst of opening these new accounts. This person has you know, told you that you're going to have the world and unicorns too. And you're signing all the paperwork. Are you going to know the difference between, you know, paperwork that includes this exemption and allows them to get paid more than a level fee or not? It's going to be very difficult to be able to figure out if that's the case. And so the problem that I have with this fiduciary standard is the first thing is that the Department of Labor has carved out exceptions that will allow it not necessarily to be business as usual. It's going to be a little bit better, but we're not confident that we're going to get the absolute best interest of the client when we have these exceptions in place and these exemptions. And so I find it difficult. I find it difficult to remain confident that people are going to be in a better situation. If anything, uh, part of what's going to happen is that we're going to get this little world of investments that that the lawyers say, okay, that that's 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 going to pass muster. If somebody you know challenges that, that's going to be okay. But then not really what's in a client's best interest. And when you're giving that kind of advice, there's usually only one answer. You know what's in your best interest? This one thing. And to have a world of different options that you can pick from and, uh, you know, to have people be able to get paid differently for that, you know, people either investment advisors either have to have that as their backbone of what they're doing or or, or not. You know, they're either going to act in your best interest or they're not. And I'll tell you, one of the best things that you can do is ask the, the financial advisor, the insurance agent, whoever you're meeting with, if they're trying to give you advice on finances. You know, ask them to sign a fiduciary pledge. Now, you can go online and you can Google this stuff. And then if you do, you're going to find like a fiduciary's oath. You know, there's one out there for financial advisors. And what you what you essentially would be asking them to sign is, look, I promise that everything that I do is in your best interest. And if you get them to sign that in every circumstance, for every account that they're handling, for every investment that they're making, now you can start to feel a little bit more comfortable that in fact, you know, they're going to be looking at for your best interest. Now, when we come back, I'm going to be talking about different investment options along the way and where this DOL rule is going to come into play with your retirement accounts, where you're going to see it kind of uh, just nestle itself in. So uh, stay tuned. When we come back from this break, we're going to talk a little bit more about the DOA, DOL fiduciary rule. It's a big change out in the investment world, and you need to know how to protect yourself. So we'll come back uh, from this quick break, and we'll keep talking. This is Make Last, helping you keep your legal ducks in a row and your financial nest egg secure. Do you have an IRA or 401k? Most Americans do. The IRS doesn't let you avoid paying taxes on that account forever, and your required minimum distributions, or RMDs, will affect your financial health in many ways. If you have an IRA or 401k, you need to attend this free class hosted by Victor Medina. If you're at or near retirement age, you'll soon have to pay taxes on your IRAs and other tax-deferred savings accounts. Taxes on RMDs can be a major financial burden unless you know how to protect yourself. Learn simple strategies that could save you thousands. Victor Medina, a certified financial planner and wealth protection strategist, is going to teach you how to minimize the taxes you pay on your IRA distributions, including how to avoid the 50% tax penalty for taking the wrong amount. In addition, you'll learn how to leave a legacy behind for your kids and grandkids. Education is the key element in preventing unnecessary taxes. Don't just assume that everything is going to be all right. Make a plan now before it's too late. There are ways to protect your money. Spots are limited for the free educational workshop. So visit MakeItLastRadio.com slash IRA to reserve your seat. If you have an IRA or 401k, go to MakeItLastRadio.com slash IRA today. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Make It Last. We have been talking all day about the DOL fiduciary rule. And I haven't said that once correctly. 
I feel like I got marbles in my mouth. It's a mouthful to talk about the new Department of Labor, so-called fiduciary rule. And it's really important for people because as of June 9th, anybody who handles retirement money and gives advice, including financial professionals of all types, where they call themselves brokers or advisors or planners or wealth managers or whatever else, they got to adhere to these things called impartial conduct standards, which we're calling the fiduciary, which is some reasonable rates. So... If you thought that your financial advisor was already required to do this, you're not alone. About 46% of all Americans believe that uh, financial advisors are required by law to act in their interest. And it's kind of true for people who charge fees rather than commissions, but it hasn't been true for everyone else. And there is lots of people. There are lots of people that believe that, uh, you know, because someone is looking out, uh, you know, handling their finances and things like that, that. Um, the fact that they don't charge for their advice is somehow a benefit. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, the worst thing that I hear is somebody saying that they've got free financial advice. Free advice of any kind is hard to stomach because, you know, if that person's not getting paid by you, they're getting paid by somebody. We all got to handle the same obligations. We got car payments. We got kids. We got mortgage payment. You know, we got to pay the bills. So how we get paid for our day-to-day work is very, very important. And it's you know, in the financial world harder than ever to really kind of figure that out. So we're going to see some changes. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to um, see, I think, is a lot of new advertisements coming out. You're going to see a lot of people talking about this because this new rule that came into effect on June 9th um, is actually only the first phase. This is the ramp up phase. The real rule, the rule in its final form, okay, um, including the the rule that allow people to bring class actions and lawsuits actually is not going to be in effect until January 1st of 2018. And in the meantime, the Department of Labor is reviewing whether or not this second part of the rule is necessary. So it could mean that this is as far as we get, that this kind of minimal rule with all of these exemptions as far as we go. Or it could be that we go all the way. And what can I tell you? Stay tuned to this show because we're going to let you know the way that it comes down. But you can pay attention to these changes and don't let your guard down. All right? Especially as you start to see all this new marketing stuff for uh, true fiduciaries. True fiduciaries. So we'll see what's going to happen on there. Now, if that happens and you're working with an advisor, you may get requests to restructure your account. Now, the reason for that is there's going to be strong incentives for these larger firms to move investors into fee accounts because it's much easier to supervise that. So you may get a lot of inquiries in from people. And by the way, if you're looking for a signal, if you're looking for evidence that your financial advisor has not been looking out for your best interest, watch for this phone call. Because if they're telling you you got to move and restructure your entire account, it means that they were getting paid through the back door with the other stuff that they were advising for you. And you know, they're going to end up uh, needing to make a change in order to stay compliant. Boy, is that a big red flag or a big tip that they weren't treating you right from the beginning. Next thing that you're going to see is that uh, as we move to fee accounts, you're going to start to see what you're paying for. So uh, we'll see more higher fund fees being disclosed, uh, and that will be on the statements. There'll be a clearer breakdown of fees that you're paying both for funds and advice. Um, so first, I guess, is you know don't panic if you see these new fees because they were always there. Uh, you know, it's going to be more transparent for you to be able to see that, and you're going to be able to see something that uh, probably should be even clearer than your than your cell phone bill. But uh, don't don't panic. Uh, it, stuff is there. You probably you didn't see you know, anything new in terms of fees. You're not paying more, but you may want to examine those because you could be paying a lot more than is is necessary. I mean, one of the things that we do in our office is when we start to talk to people about their retirement planning. We examine the cost of their investments as one of the first steps because that's like a that's like leaving the leaky faucet on. So we kind of want to tighten that up. And we do talk to people about the cost of their investments. And often when we do that, they see how much they've been paying for their advice in which it's been embedded, you know. And then sometimes on top of that, uh, you'll see um, your fees for, for advice. So be vigilant. Look at this. But don't be surprised if you see uh, fees being disclosed and if you think that they're high. They were, they were always there. You're just getting to see them now.
Uh, next thing is, is your advisor might recommend uh, new funds or new products. You know, in addition to restructuring your accounts to ne require new paperwork to be in a fee-based account instead of commissions, um, you you may see new financial products, including specifically new annuities and fund classes as a result of this. So in fund classes, this is going to go way beyond time that I have for in the show, but you can buy different kinds of shares of the same fund and they charge differently and they pay the investor differently. Excuse me, they, they pay the advisor differently. So class A, class B, class C, class I funds. So we may see there was class R for retirement. That, those were disaster. So we may see a new set of funds that are out there, fund share classes that were uh, more about level fees. And uh, I'm expecting to see new annuities that are going to have shorter surrender periods um, as we do in these, especially if they're going to start to reduce the amount of um, commissions that they're paying out. My advice to you is don't be too quick to sign anything. OK, um, at the end of the day, uh, the new rule does not prohibit those commission based products. And I talked to you before about how we can have those exemptions in there, including a two different ways, two different ways of getting around the requirement that you charge a level fee, uh, especially if you want to make a commission. So if you don't know quite yet what's going on, don't be too quick to sign anything because un really unscrupulous financial advisors are going to look at this opportunity to talk to clients about something new without the full requirements of the law being passed as the chance to really start to build people. And so they get in front of folks and they will say, this is something you got to do because of the new rule and sign everything. And it's just paying them as much as they would be paid before and still kind of, I, I think, stealing money. I'm going to call it what it is, stealing money from investors. So be, don't, don't be too quick. And you're going to still need to ask some hard questions. So um, even though there's new rules in place, it only applies to retirement accounts. So as I mentioned before, it's going to be crucial for uh, clients to ask their advisors, does your advisory agreement require you to be a fiduciary for all investments, not just the money in my 401k or IRA? And, you know, they, they should be comfortable asking hard questions like, are you a fiduciary? Will you sign a pledge to that? Do you have my best interests in mind? And in addition to that, you know, I look at the bill and the statement and say, I want to know what I'm paying for. I want to know who I'm paying it to and why I'm paying it. And you should be comfortable asking those hard questions um, to your advisors. And by the way, this is the opportunity that if you don't like the answers that you're getting, well, it's time to uh, think about making a change. Okay. So you're going to want to be looking at uh, somebody that is going to sign a fiduciary pledge, is going to look out for your best interest. Um, and, you know, that's the way that we've been doing work from the moment that we set out, because as lawyers, that's the only thing that we can do is work for our client's best interest. There's, of course, we're going to do it that way. But as financial advisors, it's the right way to treat them, too. So to wrap up for today, you know, this new DOL rule. So yeah, I couldn't even say it then. This new DOL rule, it's important and it is going to help. But I don't want anybody to be falsely confident and, you know, put too much faith in it. You're still going to have to look out for this stuff. And you are going to you know, sharply consider whether or not you want to work with somebody that's a fiduciary in your world or if you want to uh, continue with the status quo. But this is your opportunity to examine that and and see if there's a change that you want to make. So that's it for today's show. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank everybody on the production team for putting together such a great show. We sound great because they're great at their job. If you like this show, please do us a favor. Go on to iTunes and leave us a positive review. It's one of the ways that Apple figures out which podcasts to uh, to promote to other people. And we would really appreciate it if you could share the the good feelings that you have about this show on the Apple website, on the iTunes, but also share it with your friends. Go to makeitlastradio.com and forward that web address to people that you know could benefit from listening to shows like this one. We're letting people know about how to make sure that they're protecting themselves and their retirement money. So thanks so much for joining us. This has been Make It Last with Victor Medina, where we help you keep your legal ducks in a row and your financial nest egg secure. We'll catch you next week, next Saturday. The foregoing content reflects the opinions of Medina Law Group, LLC, and Private Client Capital Group, LLC, and is subject to change at any time without notice. Content provided herein is for informational purposes only and should not be used or construed as investment or legal advice or a recommendation regarding the purchase or sale of any security or to follow any legal strategy. There is no guarantee that the strategies, statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. 
Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. All investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There's no guarantee that any investment plan or strategy will be successful. We recommend that you consult with a professional dedicated to your needs.